What does the perfect Pokémon look like? You might say Agron, and you'd actually be right, but what about Spinda? What does the perfect Spinda look like? All Spinda are great, but they're not all created equally. I want the perfect Spinda. I want it to be shiny, I want it to have my favorite pattern, and I want it to be as competitively viable as possible. With over 4 billion Spinda patterns alone, catching a Spinda this specific has to be a statistical anomaly, right? How long would it take to hunt something like this? Would it be like the lifespan of an average human? Or would it take longer than the collapse of human civilization? Or maybe even longer? Well, there's really only one way to find out. First of all, what are we aiming for here? What does perfect look like with regards to Spinda? If you've seen my video playing Doom using only Spinda patterns, you'll know that my favorite Spinda pattern is this one, represented by a personality value, or PID, of 88889898. As I covered in that video, this is the hexadecimal representation of the PID. A Pokémon's personality value determines many things, including Spinda's dot patterns, but it also determines shininess. Now, the Spinda pattern is determined only by Spinda's personality value, but shininess is based on several factors, including the Pokémon's personality value, your trainer ID, and your secret ID. This is a problem because based on your specific trainer ID and secret ID, it's possible that your favorite Spinda pattern might never be able to shine for you. It might shine for someone else, but literally never for you. Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy coming at you with some major drama alerts, okay? First things first, right off the bat, it turns out your favorite Spinda pattern actually hates you. I mean, frankly, who's surprised? Just another in a long line of cancelable offenses. Anyway, guys, in this next election, I think I'm just gonna close my eyes and wing it, okay? Because at the end of the day, it actually doesn't really matter who you vote for because... Blech. Okay, just for the sake of argument, let's assume that your IDs just so happen to be in line with the possibility of generating a shiny version of your specific favorite Spinda pattern. The funny consequence of this is basically that this shiny hunt starts on file creation, not while you're searching for the Pokémon in the wild. So have fun resetting and making a new file over and over again until you get the right trainer ID and secret ID. With 2 to the 32, or over 4 billion total combinations for trainer ID and secret ID, how many are actually viable? Well, for one specific Spinda pattern in generations 3 through 5, there are 2 to the 13 possible combinations that work, which is 8192. This means that you have odds of about 1 in a little over 500,000 to get the right ID combo. In Gen 6 and later, your odds are twice as good, since the shiny odds are twice as good, meaning 1 in a little under 300,000. I'd like to think I'm a blissy for double-checking the math in this section, and for also notifying me that in the earlier generations, due to some fun quirks in the game's code, uh, there are certain Spinda patterns that can never shine for anybody. So that's great. Hey there gamers, if you're enjoying the video, please do subscribe. Also, I just wanted to address the fact that no, I did not dive into a vat of mustard. Uh, I got my wisdom teeth out eight days ago as of filming this, and the bruises will not go away. But hey, subscribe! I lost four teeth to make this video. Actually, it was for health, but uh, whatever. Back to the video. Okay, bye. So, you reset enough times to get a good trainer ID and secret ID. Great! Now you just need to find the specific Spinda you're looking for. That sh it will be easy. There are only 4,294,967,295 possible unique Spinda patterns, so that means your odds of happening upon the exact one you want is just one over that number. Okay, so not so good. So that means, so far, if we're playing Gen 3, we are at raw odds of about 1 in 2.3 quadrillion. That means in later generations, finding this specific shiny Spinda pattern is 1 in 1.2 quadrillion, uh, which is, by all accounts, um, not really that much better. What about IVs? I mean, I said I wanted this Spinda to be competitively viable, right? So it needs to have good stats. Well, for the perfect Spinda, the most competitively viable Spinda, we're gonna need perfect IVs across the board. We can make this a little easier by sacrificing one IV. If we were to get rid of one, I'd say probably special attack could go to zero because Spinda doesn't really have any great special attacks. So that could be anywhere from zero to 31, so we don't even really need to worry about it. But we need a 31 everywhere else. This means of the six stats, five will need to be perfect. This is one over 32 to the fifth, which is one in over 33 million. Tacking that on means a new probability of finding our perfect Spinda 
of one in 10 sextillion. Uh, uh oh, I don't even really want to say these next few words, but um, we're, uh, we're gonna need a good nature. In generations three and four, nature is based on, you guessed it, personality value. This calculation uses something called a modulo, which is basically just a fancy word for, we're gonna do a division and then take a remainder. The PID mod 25, that is whatever the remainder of the PID is when divided by 25, determines the nature. That means that for my favorite spinda, in gens three and four, I can only get a hasty spinda with my pattern, shiny or not. In later generations, nature is based on a different value and not anything in the PID. I think given that, and that the odds are so much worse in the earlier generations to find our perfect spinda, to give ourselves the best possible chance here and to make the most competitively viable spinda possible, let's abandon the earlier generations and turn our eyes to the later games. Now, I, I know what you're thinking, but ADEF, RNG manipulation, that would make this so easy. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, yes, I saw all of your comments on my shiny probability video, and there were a lot of them about RNG manips. I'll be making a video on RNG manipulation and what constitutes true randomness soon enough, so stick tight and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But suffice it to say, RNG in Generation 3 does not work the way you think it does. And even if it did, we're not manipping this spinda. We're curious how long it would take to find the perfect spinda without any RNG manipulation or glitches. Plus, even if you could manipulate this spinda, manipping one specific pattern out of 4 billion and it has the IVs you want and it's shiny, this would take a whole hell of a lot longer than you think. With that in mind, let's look ahead. What later games in the franchise have spinda? After all, later games have items that can change abilities and IVs and natures, so surely that's the best place to look. Okay, so there's not very many games that have Spinda. All right. There's no Spinda in Sword, Shield, Scarlet, or Violet. Game Freak, why are you guys in there with the yellow baby panda boy? What are you for thinking of? Okay, so we're left with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This is, this is workable. We can work with this. In BDSP, there are ability capsules, so you can change the ability. And there's also mints to change nature. And then there's also hyper training, so we can train the IVs. So we don't have to worry about nature, ability, or IVs. Great. Okay, so if we don't need to worry about finding a spinda with perfect IVs or with the nature or ability we want, that means all we have to worry about is finding our specific pattern and making sure that it's shiny. How hard could that be? We already know the odds of finding the Spinda since we have to get the right trainer ID and secret ID, which is about 1 in 260,000, and we need to see the correct pattern, which is about 1 in 4 billion. The number we have is the number from earlier, which is about 1 in 1.2 quadrillion. How long would that take to find? Let's start out with our hunt for the trainer ID and secret ID. The amount of time it takes to be able to view your trainer ID and verify it's the one you need in a playthrough of BDSP is once you get your starter, which takes about three and a half minutes from the start of the game. Your secret ID is not a number the game ever tells you, but it can be calculated using external programs, all of which together would typically take far longer than three and a half minutes. Let's be incredibly generous and say you can verify your trainer ID and secret ID within five minutes of booting up the game. Just FYI, that is not the case. For this calculation, we're going to use the expected value for all of these probabilities to keep things simple as our target number for how long it might take. So let's say it takes 262,144 attempts to get the ID combo you need. That is 1.3 million minutes or 21,000 hours. That is 900 straight days of gameplay. Two and a half years of constant hunting. No sleeping, no eating, just playing the game. And that's a conservative estimate. But okay, in the context of the numbers that are gonna show up in a moment, it's really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. Now that we've got the IDs we need, let's move on to the hunt itself. We now need to play the game up until the point at which we can see Spinda. This requires the national decks because Spinda is a swarm encounter. So first we need to beat the game. A solid speedrun of BDSP is about four hours. And then we just need to see every single Pokemon in the Sinnoh decks. Let's say all told that only takes like 10 hours. A small number. Wow, only two digits? Yippee. Unfortunately, this is where the nightmare begins. At this point, if you run into your specific Spinda pattern, it will be shiny guaranteed every time. The problem though is finding your pattern. There are over 4 billion of them. If you encounter only Spinda, and let's say you do an encounter every 10 seconds, which is also pretty conservative, 
it's still gonna take, according to the expected value, over 1,300 years. And again, that is straight, uninterrupted gameplay. I'm not even sure human civilization will last that long, and that's if a robot were playing the game. For a human that needs to sleep, eat, and go to work, it'd probably take twice that long, if not longer. Now, this number could go a bit lower based on the fact that many Spinda patterns look essentially the same. There are probably at least four Spinda patterns that look almost exactly like your favorite does. So maybe it'll only take 300 years or so. Yay! Run 10 copies of the game simultaneously non-stop and have a bot constantly doing encounters and checking for the right patterns, and it might only take 30 years. With that method, also, finding the right ID combo at the beginning of this hunt would only take like a couple of months. So 30 years and change, all told, is how long it would take to find this perfect Spinda, assuming you have 10 games running as fast as can be, literally non-stop, perfectly, and you're comfortable with settling for a Spinda that's one or two values off of yours. If you do it on one copy by yourself, taking sleep breaks like a good little Nintendo gamer, you stop at nothing but the perfect little guy, and you do nothing but play BDSP, eat, and sleep, I'd say you're conservatively looking at over 2,000 years of gameplay. Now, I'm no doctor, but I don't think this would be good for you. And also, I don't think people live that long. The really sad thing is that I think by that point, everybody's just gonna be playing the newly released Super Brilliant Diamond on their Switch 2 OLEDs. And that new console is gonna run you at least 10 irradiated meal tokens. And that's if you can find a vendor willing to part with one of their 5,000 scalped units. I don't know about you, but I do not think Nuclear Wasteland Warlord Brinifax is gonna much like hearing that you, a Ravager, is wasting their time shiny hunting Spinda. I mean, his favorite Pokemon is Charizard, because of course it is, but you didn't hear that from me. Anyway, I digress. You wanna get some drinks with me and the boys down at the Bezos Thunderdome by Meta tonight? I hear there's a half-off special on Amaricia Margaritas. Oh, and Paul got lost in a dust storm last week, but he finally turned up this morning and he only lost an arm, but other than that, he's like totally fine, so we're gonna get absolutely wasted. What's that? You're, you're still resetting over trainer IDs and secret IDs? You're still on that part of the hunt? Oh no. Thank you everybody so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. On screen right now are a, another video for you to go watch, but also my top tier patrons on Patreon. Thank you to all of you so much. You are able to help me do what I do. Uh, if you want to support on Patreon, there are great benefits. There's a lot of clips over there, edited content from my videos that don't make the cut, outtakes, super long explanations of stuff that don't make it to YouTube, so consider supporting. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.